Okay, so this is, uh, um, we're getting on the final countdown here for the election, so this is basically the um, my set of facts. Uh, I've been tracking facts uh, and, and doing fact checks on, on on this stuff for quite a while. So anyway, I got uh, stuff on my on the website um, is where I kind of keep track of that, crapnow.org, also known as crapnow.org. <laughs> But CRAP is kind of my term for Comprehensive Reform of American Politics, so it's kind of a, a little silly way to, to, to phrase it. But um, on that website kind of has some, some basic information, trying to be as straight up factual as possible. Main thing is, is fact checking. I'm big into, into that on both sides. And uh, so on the T minus 10 uh, countdown, we got 10 days to go roughly. Um, I'm just kind of updating on the latest uh, uh, fact stuff from, from the Trump rally mostly, um, and then I'll kind of gradually report on some of the other items as well. So, um, uh, but basically the number one item, the first thing, he basically gave a rally in, uh, in Wisconsin again, and uh, so he talks, talks about the surge of coronavirus cases and relates it to testing. Um, and that is a commonly disproved uh, fact it is, uh, that, you know, he uh, basically relates the fact that there's higher COVID cases due to the fact that the U.S. does more testing than anyone. It's true and by volume, U.S. does more testing, uh, but that is not the cause for the higher cases. And yes, if you test more, you are likely to get, get more, but basically the scientists and um, folks pretty much discount that and uh, indicate that, that uh, um, it's not just the testing that, that comes up with that. So, um, so that's been fact check, and then again, that's on that uh, fact file. I'll play a clip for you. And you notice they always go cases, cases. You know why cases? Because we do more testing than anybody. Okay, so so uh, that's uh, the clip on testing, um, and uh, again, that is not true. So basically, case numbers have been outpacing the the number of testing, and uh, also another thing they look at is the positivity rates as well. And there's some times where that is increasing. So. Um, there may be some correlation, but it's just faulty to, uh, to make it a cause and effect situation. So that's incorrect. Um, the next item is the common downplaying of the virus. And in this time, it's called rounding the corner. A lot of times it says it's going away, this will disappear, whatever. But the latest term is rounding the corner. So here you go. Going away, it's rounding the turn. You know, the vaccines are coming, right? And they're going to be really great. And the therapeutics are amazing. And maybe cures, I don't know. Well, there is no rounding the turn yet, uh, and it's a common uh, type of phrase that he's used. Essentially, he's used, um, you know, rounding the corner, rounding the turn. Earlier days, and it said it would just go away, or this would just disappear. His, it's basically his way to discount the current COVID facts. So they, you know, continually challenge what those are, but they are the facts, and they're, they're um, validated by the scientific community. So the reality is, uh, right now, the numbers, it is not going away. They have not rounded a corner unless the corner is going up. Because uh, in the last couple of days when he was saying that, the, the U.S. hit their number one and number two highest daily rates of new cases for COVID. So um, by any fact, you can't say that that's rounding the corner. It doesn't mean that, they, uh, that his policies on handling it are wrong or right, uh, but basically the numbers are going up. Some countries, they report differently. If somebody's sick with a heart problem and they die of COVID, they say they died of a heart problem. If somebody's terminally ill with cancer and they have COVID, we report them. And you know, doctors get more money and hospitals get more money. Think of this incentive. So some countries do it differently. If somebody is very sick with a bad heart, they die of COVID, they don't get reported as COVID. So then you wonder, gee, I wonder why their cases are so low. This country and their reporting systems are really not doing it right. If somebody has a really bad heart and they're close to death, even if they're not, but they have a very bad heart and they get COVID, they put it down to COVID. Other countries put it down to a heart. So with regards to the, the hospital data, that that is uh, incorrect, at least based on uh, CDC and Dr. Fauci as well. Um, I have heard uh, various accounts of that, and you know there might be some truth to that. Uh, that maybe some COVID deaths uh, might be. Uh, now, COVID might be a factor, but maybe it's another cause. Um, I have heard varying uh, <clears throat> data points on that. However, um, Dr. Fauci was uh, you know, made reference to the CDC posting that, that indicated there are a certain percentage that might not be related to COVID. 
Um, and he said that was basically misinterpreted. And his bottom line, he says basically the numbers you're hearing, and at that time it was 180,000. He says those are real deaths from COVID-19, and let there not be any confusion about that. So, um, without going into details, there's some uh, fact fact check sources on the on the website. Um, so that's that one. The next one is the old classic uh, guns and God type of stuff um, as well. So here's some Texas. claims. There. He's against oil, guns, and God. So that is a classic uh, anti-guns, anti-religion uh, accusation about the Democrats. But uh, it is not true. Uh, n none of the Democrats are proposing abolishing the Second Amendment, which gets commonly used, or taking away guns involuntarily. Uh, involuntarily, or at least that's not part of Biden's uh, platform. The involuntary uh, confiscation. Uh, some may be, may be pushing that, but his concept is uh, there needs to be gun in various forms of gun reform and one of those is a voluntary buyback program so uh, the concept of him being against guns or reducing eliminating the second amendment is incorrect um, the next uh, item is this is kind of one of the um, I guess one of the greatest hits types of fact items is uh, that uh, Trump is responsible for the largest tax cut in history so roll the tape here. we passed the largest tax cuts in the history of our country the Democrats want to raise your taxes Tell me about that. So with regards to the tax cut, um, uh, the, that is false. Now, it was a large tax cut. It's just strange that it needs to be represented as the largest in history. That's a Trump-style item, but it's just false. So basically, um, you know, his Trump cuts related, you know, had a certain type of G, uh, percentage of the gross domestic product. Um, and which is 0.9%, I think is how it was calculated. Um, and then when you rate that with all the other tax cuts in history, that was about eighth uh, overall, eighth or ninth. And, uh, and even a couple of Obama's tax cuts supposedly were at a higher level. So that's all in the fact checks. So that's that. Um, the next item is suburbs, suburbs, suburbs. That comes up a lot. It's their American dream, it's your... Did you see the clip though, where they have a little house, another little, and then they have like a six story building that goes, and low income, and a lot of crime, and it's um, been a yeah, horror. Trump uh, did do a change there. I think he did an executive order, and uh, Obama had a 2015 uh, rule in the Fair Housing Act, and so uh, I, uh, Trump did revoked that. Uh, however, it, did, it doesn't have a lot of teeth, apparently, and um, basically there still is a general obligation to um, to keep in some type of affirmative action with regards to housing in there. And the previous uh, rule apparently did not actually uh, force the building of low-income housing in suburban areas. And uh, so that's a trigger word uh, that Trump uses to say, oh, they're going to bring in a crime to the sub suburbs by bringing in low income. So um, anyway, that's that's the fact there. So the last item is the one of the true greatest hits from 2016, but it's being revised now. Who pays for the Mexico border wall? So here we go. Said to, I said, we're building the wall. It's better. It's great. It's the best wall, all that stuff, right? And they said, but Mexico is not paying for it. I said, they never fail. <laughs> so Mexico is paying for it, and that's the way it is. They're paying a border tax. That's okay. They're paying a border tax. They're paying for the wall. Who's paying for the wall goes back to 2016. But the current, more recent ones, first of all, Trump will deny that he ever said uh, Mexico will pay for the wall. And then he said, well, they will pay via uh, changes in the trade agreements that are bringing in more revenue for the U.S. Um, but the most recent stuff is talking about a border tax. And he's using that in rallies and saying that you know he's basically implementing a border tax uh, to pay for the wall. So Mexico is paying for the wall. However... That is false. Mexico is not paying for the wall. Uh, no one is aware of this border tax, at least, and this, um, you know, and, and based on information from Customs Border Patrol and some, uh, some the Center for what uh, I guess the Center for the United States and Mexico, um, there is no uh, awareness of the border tax. So anyway, uh, the wall is being paid for by U.S. funds, and that's been confirmed by many other sources. So that is that, and that is kind of the end of this this uh, T minus. 10 countdown <laughs> fact check. Um, I'll do a T minus 9 one. They'll focus more in the 60 minutes interview. Um, uh, but anyway, all my stuff, uh, crapnow.org um, and the facts page. And that's uh, where the, fa the, the full facts file is. So you can check the sources if you want to. There you go.